Hello and welcome back to class 5. Last time in class 4 uh, we watched the video with a lot of theory on how to do weight painting. All the tips and tricks I gathered in that one video so that if you had at some point to go back and look um, to find some specific technique I thought it would be easier if you knew well there's one video to go look in most likely to find the answers um, but that means I didn't really have time to do much weight painting last time uh, we still have to do that and I've been debating with myself how to do this because weight painting is time consuming and it is a lot of fiddling uh, trying a little bit here and trying a little bit there and testing it and seeing how did that work out and sometimes it, it seems to work out good and then you move the body into another position and then you realize that you actually destroyed another part. Uh, so it's a kind of a dance <laughs> uh, between you and, and, and the weight. Weights on your mesh. Um, I guess that's why they call weight painting an art form. The more experience you have with it, the easier it is, but it's never, well, in my experience anyway, it's never super easy. It's always a little fiddly. And because it's so time consuming, uh, this is going to take all class today. And I'm sorry about that. Um, my other option was to speed up a lot of this and I might still speed up stuff um, but to speed up a lot of this and then just tell you that now I did this and now I did this without actually showing you but I'm thinking if I did that and and you would have to do that as your homework of course and you went to <laughs> to your file and started out and realized that okay Selstyn did this in five minutes and I'll take five days um, that wouldn't be fair, I think, because I'm not going to do this in five minutes. That's not going to happen. So I thought if you see my struggle here, perhaps you won't be too upset when it's a struggle for you as well. So I made a few notes here, as usual, um, but there's not much about shortcuts and all that stuff because that's in the other video. But I, I tried to pin out my my workflow with this first of all i need to adjust the mesh at the belly in edit mode and in wireframe uh, as you can see there's a lot of slack here and right now on this mesh body um in this shape it it doesn't look terrible it, it looks sort of okay um but as soon as we change the belly line a little bit um, it will have a huge impact on that part of the mesh um, the more extreme the bone is moved or scaled uh, the more impact it has on the mesh so if i add a little bit of stomach stomach slider or belly slider in second life i will get like a pregnancy shape here very fast. I mean, I think my belly slider in Second Life at my normal shape is around 12. And this must be a less because I I tested this and when I'm wearing this in Second Life, I got like a pregnant shape here. So we have to keep this belly thing in check. And that means I, I, I have to pull that in a little bit. And then we have... Uh, this task where we need to check all the weights with when we move the the armature so if i go to weight paint mode and i can select the bone and so all this here moving bones around and seeing if the mesh follows um that's the next step and i we are only working on a top right now and as we are working on a top i know that the top of the shoulders here is always a problem it's always a problem down here under the arm in the armpit always this is often a problem here at the back as well at the shoulder blades although i think actually the star mesh body is really nicely made here 
it's not as bad on this as on some of the other bodies I've been trying to work with. Um, and then there's, in saying life, there's always problems around the elbows. Uh, and we will have to tackle that here as well. So we need to pull the mesh out a bit and make some extra space around the elbow for it to not poke through. Um, and what else? Yeah, and then of course we need to test what's happening if she's bending back and forth and from one side and to the other and see if if whoops if these parts of the mesh will poke through the body or stay nicely where it's supposed to and then we have those uh, hanging parts of the jacket which are actually quite far away from the mesh that should be influencing it and that might give us some issues so we need to check that that's looking okay as well and then our next part three is where we are testing with shape changes um, when we are working on the upper body here um, in second life there's a lot of variations around the chest area and sometimes the belly area um, so we need to test that our garment works with different bust sizes and different belly sizes um, preferably where our mesh looks fairly smooth and with a somewhat human shape still um, and and there's also often a bit of a variation on on the waist uh, in second life people some some have very slim avatars and some have quite sturdy avatars and we need to make sure that that's possible with the garment too so when we've been through that done this belly thing and then checked for movement and checked for shape sliders then it's time to test the load to the beta, beta grid because uh, usually if if we get it all perfect here in blender and we bring it to second life it's never entirely the same there's always issues so we are using the beta grid to to get this working and uh, when we do that we will upload to beta grid test it and then we will see okay there's a problem area here then we go back to blend and try to fix it then we upload again see if it's better and so on and so forth i will speed up some parts because i can't do this without doing something repetitive and that's just boring to watch uh, in the end here i added a little bit of a hint on those shoulders because there's so many bones influencing this area here and sometimes it can be really hard to find the one to uh, tweak to get an area to behave. It's not a guarantee that this is uh, the solution if you have a problem on the shoulders, but it's something to try out. Okay, so um, I'll do the belly thing first so we get that done. Um, first of all, let me reset the mesh select everything a and then alt r to get back to t pose okay and then edit mode here and if i go to wireframe i can see what i'm doing um i'll just have proportional editing on then it's fairly easy to move it around and a bit of a large brush here um i have to be a little bit careful because once we're done here we should preferably be able to wear pants under this so in reality i can't make it completely skin tight this um, i don't really want to either because why else do all that cloth simulation if i'm just smoothing out every part of of the wrinkles afterwards but yeah okay let's go with that so that was the belly fixed here for now um, I will have to tweak it when uh, 
when we are trying to fit a pair of pants under it. 